friends, thank you for joining us for worship this morning from the Church on the Bayou in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Please join me in an opening prayer. Gracious, loving Creator God, as you cause the sun to rise, bring the light of Christ to dawn in our souls and dispel all darkness. Give us grace to reflect Christ's glory and let the love of Jesus show in our deeds. Let Jesus shine in our words. Let our hands be the gentle hands of love. Your will, God, not ours, be done. It is important for us to recognize and acknowledge the turmoil and violence and pain that is rampant in our country today. The murder of George Floyd this past week in Minneapolis, the murder of Ahmaud Arbery in Georgia in February, the murder of Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky in March. These events have triggered old and very present wounds. It pains me to say that I have lived in seven states around this beautiful and great nation, and there has not been a time ever when I have not been aware of discrimination and hatred and violence and anger towards race, gender, religion, the list goes on. In the wake of Breonna Taylor's murder in Louisville, Louisville City Council person Jessica Green said, quote, as an African American, black folks are tired of talking, tired of meeting. She said during a news conference, I can't take another meeting where there's not actually something that specifically happens. My friends, on this beautiful Sunday morning, this day of Pentecost, I empower us all as believers and followers of our risen Lord Jesus Christ to hear the words from Proverbs 31. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those who are perishing. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. We have a responsibility as believers. We have a responsibility this day to change what we can change, little ways, big ways, in whatever ways we can. And so now as we come into a time of our worship, we are grateful for the privilege of singing God's praises and being filled on this day with the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost. I am honored and delighted to introduce our musicians, Susie, Nora, and Dan, to hear Spirit of the Living God.
Thank you so much. Beautiful. Our scripture passage this morning from Acts 2 says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. This is God's word for us on this Pentecost Sunday. It is a day of celebration for us. It is the last day of the Easter season in the church calendar. Today, we mark the day when everything changed again. The world was changed, of course, with the birth of Jesus. The world was changed again as Jesus' earthly ministry took place. The world was changed again at the crucifixion murder, the resurrection. The world was changed again when Jesus ascended back to his heavenly home. And on Pentecost, indeed, the world was changed by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in all believers. What happened that day was the beginning of church, the birth of the church. My, oh my, have we complicated Jesus' intentions for his church, haven't we? Bickering and disagreement, fighting and discrimination in the name of God. Today, in 2020, church is changing again. The world is changing again. And you who are hearing this word today and we who are following the risen Lord have an unprecedented opportunity to do this differently again. The world as we knew it in January or February is not the world we walk in today. Little children walking around with masks on their faces, people in grocery stores gloved and gowned and masked, Though the world is not the same as it was for a variety of reasons, our God is the same. Our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. And the Holy Spirit that came upon that ragtag, terrified group of believers on that day of Pentecost, that Holy Spirit is the same and is alive and thriving in we who believe. Reverend Eric Hall is the director of the Spiritual Care Association, which I am a member of, proud member of. He sent a letter recently that had words that I want to share with you. Reverend Hall said, we hear the word unprecedented thrown around a lot these days, but in the 300,000 year history of our species, little has happened to Homo sapiens that is truly unprecedented. Our ancestors have dealt with disease, famine, wars, violence, natural disasters of every kind, and yes, plagues that have decimated populations over and over again. Reverend Hall says, the coronavirus is just the new face of an old enemy. Through it all, humanity has survived and civilization has flourished. 
we have always found ways to get beyond the fears, ignorance, and superstitions of the past. Reverend Hall says, this pandemic is not the first the world has faced. Ancient Greece and Rome were ravaged by plagues. Europe lost a third of its population to the Black Death in the Middle Ages, while the Spanish flu may have killed as many as 50 million people in the final years of World War I. Reverend Hall says, trying to put the current pandemic in perspective, some would point out that more people have died from cancer, smoking, alcohol, HIV, road accidents, the list goes on. And he says, we lean on the wisdom of scripture that assures us no matter how unprecedented events seem, as Ecclesiastes tells us, there is truly nothing new under the sun. Sadly today, what is also not new is discrimination and hatred. They existed before Jesus came to earth, and sadly they exist today. And please understand that the only way that that hatred and discrimination can continue is by teaching. Angry, hateful adults must teach anger and hatred to children, or it could not continue. We have a responsibility, my friends, to stop it now. And what that means in practice is, you don't snicker and laugh if somebody makes a racial slur. You don't snicker and laugh or blow it off as, oh, that's just good old uncle whatever. It's not okay. Discrimination and hatred of every kind is not okay. It's never been okay. But we who proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior must, must stand up for justice for all persons, no matter their color, their sexual orientation, their race, even their religion. We have a responsibility today to change our behavior, and by doing so, to be examples of Jesus Christ in this incredibly hurt and stressed out world. You know, there have been a lot of commercials lately. Every company in the world is here for us right now in these uncertain times. Isn't that comforting? Roofing companies, insurance companies, everybody's here for us, to work with us in these uncertain times. I'm 61 years old. Please forgive me, but when were the certain times? Did I miss that chapter? Because I don't remember at any point thinking, hey, we're in certain times right now. This is pretty cool. I don't think that's happened, right? So are we in uncertain times any more uncertain than we were? Well, it's certainly a weirder time than it's ever been, that's for sure. But uncertain? We as believers are Holy Spirit powered. We are Holy Spirit filled. And God revealed something very difficult to me in the last couple of weeks that I want to share with you. You know, he tells me stuff, she tells me stuff, and then I share it with you. It's kind of how it works. So what she said to me was, she said, you know, Lisa, I got to tell you, you've kind of been praying a little bit wrong for a while. And I thought, oh, I have? I'm so sorry. What have I been doing? And God said to me, you know, it kind of hurts my feelings a little bit when you pray, God, please show me what your will is for my life today. And I thought, I didn't realize that that was wrong for me to be praying it that way. And God said, well, it's not really wrong technically, but how come you're not saying, hey God, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? That's a different way of looking at it, isn't it? Saying, God, please show me what your will is for me today <clears throat> separates God from me 
puts God out here somewhere, separate from who I am. And that is not who I am, or who you are, or who we are, because we know that the Holy Spirit lives in us, God in us, with us, in us. So I've had to change my practice and praying steadily now. Okay, what are we doing today? It's just a different way of thinking about God in us, Holy Spirit power in us. My friends, please remember that Jesus' ministry on earth happened in a teeny tiny little corner of the world with a teeny tiny little group of human beings who were empowered to change the world with their courage and their understanding of the truth of who the risen Christ is by the power of the Holy Spirit living in each one of them as she lives in each one of us. Do you know that you have no less power than Peter or John? You have no less power than the beleaguered Paul. Step up, people. Step up and step out. The time is now. If not now, when? Really. If not now, when? What more can it possibly take? You have heard the expression, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Time is precious and short, and change is certain all around us. And if there is change that needs to happen within us, inside of us, today is the day to open your heart to that change. And you do not do it by yourself. We in this church community are here to stand by you. Jesus Christ is with you and in you, Holy Spirit powering you. If not now, when? Please say this with me. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. I'm thrilled to welcome back Susie and Nora and Dan for some more amazing and beautiful music.
1967, the year before Dr. Martin Luther King was murdered, this little book called Just For You was published. And I want to share a poem with you to end our service today. I've edited the language to make it more gender inclusive. Our Father up in heaven, hear this fervent prayer. May the people of all nations be united in your care. For Earth's peace and human salvation can come only by your grace and not through bombs and missiles and our quest for outer space. For until all persons recognize that the battle is the Lord's and peace on Earth cannot be won with strategy or swords. We will go on vainly fighting, as we have in ages past, finding only empty victories and a peace that cannot last. But we've grown so rich and mighty and so arrogantly strong. We no longer ask in humbleness, God, show us where we're wrong. We've come to trust completely in the power of human-made things, unmindful of God's mighty power, and that God is King of Kings. We've turned our eyes away from God to go our selfish way, and money, power, and pleasure are the gods we serve today. And the good green earth God gave us to peacefully enjoy through greed and fear and hatred we are seeking to destroy. O oh, Father up in heaven, stir and wake our sleeping souls. Renew our faith and lift us up and give us higher goals. And grant us heavenly guidance as war and violence threaten us today. For more than guns and hatred, we all need to love God's way. Please say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If this message has been helpful for you in any way or stirred you to thought, 
I invite you to please leave a comment or click one of the buttons down below to let us know that you're there. We thank you for watching. Have a safe, blessed, and joy-filled week. Amen. Oh.